The 6.5 Summit is back. It's 2024 and we are talking about AI. We're talking about AI and the impact of the enterprise, the continued build out of AI infrastructure, which is, as you know, in the data center, but also on the edge. Daniel, how are you doing, my friend? Yeah, Pat, it is good to move on from some of the data center conversations. Of course, today we have our cloud infrastructure track, but we're also here on our edge track. And Pat, we've heard this many, many times about the size of the opportunity. And of yeah. course, data centers are exploding. The AI factories and data centers are being built because we know yeah. the future workloads and how important this is going to be. But if you think about things, whether it's vehicles, factories, whether it's retail stores and operations, there is so much data being created at the edge that it would be a big miss if we didn't spend some time talking about that. Absolutely, and Dan, you know I love to look back in history, and literally over the last 40 years, every major shift has been a movement, it's kind of like an accordion, right? We go out, expands, contracts, right? So we saw mainframes, mini computers, x86 servers, PC, smartphone, tablets, and then the industrial IoT. I mean, it just goes back and forth. And I feel like we are in the mode of this moving out. And historically, compute, uh, storage, uh, and memory uh, typically wind up being where the data is created. And, and, that's, and that's the edge. So I'm super excited to have this conversation about storage on the edge, edge, Dave and Greg, welcome to the show. All right, yeah, Thank welcome you. guys. Thank you. Thank yeah, it's great. Here. Hey, can you just tell us real quickly what Solidime does for those who might not be aware? Sure, uh, yeah, so my name's Dave Dixon, this is Greg Matson. I'm a co-CEO of Solidime. And uh, Solidime was created back uh, about four years ago. We were an acquisition by SK Hynix from the old Intel NAND products group. Uh, so now that we're really a, you know, a company, an entity, et cetera, we have a unique focus compared to everybody else in the NAND business. We're really entirely focused on you know, the data center business, but that of course includes the storage servers there at the edge as well. I love it. Yeah. Greg, how about yourself? Well, I run strategy and marketing for the company, so anything to do with products and from definition to go to market to doing stuff like this. Let's talk about the, 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 the growing opportunity at the edge. Of course, uh, we've enjoyed uh, having a couple sit downs with you. Yeah. People that are watching our infrastructure track may see these gentlemen again in another yes, conversation. Maybe. <laughs> but uh, you are really a perfect example of that data center to edge. You heard us kind of teeing it up. How big is this opportunity as you see it? And talk a little bit about it specifically through the lens of storage. Well, yeah, as we did talk about previously, we looked at the scalability, right, of the infrastructure in the data center and how the, you know, high performance, high density QLC SSDs are really going to make a, be a game changer for data center storage. Now, like you mentioned, you know, edge growth is probably going to be at least 2x faster, what we see yeah. in our projections, faster than what's happening in the, in the data centers. So that opportunity is going to be even bigger there for edge servers, et cetera. And, you know, they're really going to have the same growth drivers. If you look at, you know, what's happening on the edge, I think we're familiar with those magazine articles from not too long ago, right? Data is the new oil. Yeah. And all that data, you know, it's all being created, obviously, out there on the edge. And, you know, one thing we've been talking about internally, uh, because we're very familiar, very close to data, it has a lot of what we call gravity associated with it. It's very costly and expensive to kind of move. It just want to stay there. If you, if you really wanted to try and shift all that data back to a data center, back up to the cloud, to complete all the analytics and AI training, et cetera, it's too darn slow, too darn expensive to do it. So we're going to see more and more trends yeah. of analytics, com computation, uh, even light training happening more at the edge than, and we're seeing that now, we're going to continue to see that. It's going to be a mega trend over the next rest of the decade. Yeah, so Greg, is this, is this classic like uh, smart, you know, we always like to put smart, smart manufacturing, smart logistics, uh, anything done with uh, cameras, is this the flavor of what we're talking about on the edge, retailing? Retailing, there's also, you know, detection, right, for fraud or quality detection, network, you know, maybe power grid, you know, failure detection, and uh, you know, just anything like that, but it is, uh, as Dave said, you know, it's so expensive to move the data that it'll have to be that some level of compute gets moved back to make the data useful at the edge. Because if you just store it there and do nothing, right. it's worthless. So it might be obvious to some that, that there's a difference between storage related to the data center 
and the edge, but I think it's worthy of a conversation. I mean, how is it different? Is it different from reliability, performance, capacity, form factors? H how is it different and why is it different? Well, I think uh, some, we'll see some of the same trends that we talked about in the data center itself in terms of power and performance, but you know, you mentioned reliability. I think that's an interesting one. You know, it's much harder to have you know, service stuff out in the field and of course then you know inside the data center and so you're going to see longer expected lifetimes and just the reliability requirements of comparisons between SSDs and HDDs. Uh, historically the, the trends have been about 10x better annual field rates between SSDs and, and HDDs because of the mechanical aspects of HDDs of course. When you talk about that being you know more and more deployments out in the field and having to service those higher failure rates out there, that's going to be a much bigger deal. Yeah, so, you know, at data center, right, what are some of the constants, right? Raised, raised tile flooring, right? Yeah. Every one of them. And now we're even seeing very dialed in in cooling uh, types of systems. I mean, it's literally a science as you go down each one of these floors, but also each one of these aisles. And on the edge, I mean, it could be a server bolted to uh, a brick wall yeah. Uh, that has, eh, the air conditioning sometimes doesn't work and it, and it goes out, uh, could be in the elevator shaft uh, of, uh, of a company on the shop floor of a major auto uh, manufacturer. So the, the variability certainly has to be that challenge too. Absolutely, and that's you know, where the ruggedness of a solid state drive comes in versus a hard drive. Right, and you know, as as Dave said, even the reliability, you know, five to ten x or more in some cases, uh, reliability differences um, translate into just ease of deployment uh, of SSDs versus HDDs at the edge. And, and when that hard drive goes down, business essentially stops. Right, it can stop. You lose your data. You know, maybe it's okay. Maybe it's not that critical <laughs> data. Maybe you're a, a big groceries chain and you had your, you know, your one store lost all of its records for the day and you're not uploading the revenue back into uh, kind of sounds the, the, the like a big deal to me <laughs> that's kind of a big deal yeah there's it, but it ranges yeah so but you guys you know could call out uh, maybe some of the opportunities too you know reading on this uh, you, you've made some commentary about ADAS uh, on yeah. research uh, talk a little bit about kind of you know even more how specifically SSDs can up level because really what you're you tend to be talking about the edge you tend to be talking about a lot about service providers yeah, yeah. The, um, you know, we talked about the reliability and some of the ruggedness. Um, you know, now where I think we're getting into some of these real-time applications of what's happening at the edge, we're gonna, really gonna look much higher at the much higher performance requirements, right? Now we're gonna be doing real-time decision-making, right, on the edge, and that really requires much better latencies to, you're not gonna be sending the data back up to the cloud to make a decision about what to do in a factory, for example, or in the middle of an operation. Uh, you know, those decisions need to be made be made real time between the computation and the storage, and between uh, you know the random read uh, performance differences, and then the quality of service, the latencies. It's really a it's no comparison between the you know what's happening with the legacy 90% um, HDD in storage right now to you know where SSDs are going to really be the much bigger impact. Yeah, and my company's done research on AI in the edge. Uh, Probably, probably about five years, yep. and it was machine learning, not really deep learning, because it had a hard type, it was kind of a black box. But when I compare that to generative AI, it's smaller data, okay? Mm -hmm. Even the even a small model. Oh, yeah. a, a measly billion parameter uh, model that I have to infer against is yeah. still much bigger than this random object recognition AI framework that I pulled down uh, off, off, off hugging face. And then what we're seeing too is the commingling of data on the edge yeah. uh, brings uh, storage to, uh, to the forefront. So it seems like a, a big opportunity. Yeah. Well, and that's where the, you know, the capacity density that you can get with high capacity solid state drives is you know, as much as four to five X more than the highest capacity hard drives available today. Right. Enabled by both the form factors, but also just the, the sheer capacity of each drive. You know, I mean, right today we're shipping 60 terabyte drives and the nearest competitor hard drive is 24 terabytes moving to 30, you know, later this year. And by that time, we'll be well ahead of the 60 terabyte uh, capacity point. Yeah. So, 
you know, you're, you're teeing me up very nicely, Greg, and I appreciate <laughs> you doing that. But uh, portfolio, let's talk about that a little bit, because I think we've, we've talked at a macro level about what the challenges and opportunities are, where storage fits in. But what about Solidime? So what are you building, Greg? Uh, talk a little bit about the products and how they're addressing these challenges that we've outlined. Well, for several years now, we've been looking at the opportunity to how do we capture more of that cold data that's sitting in hard drives and putting it, you know, transforming it into warm data. Mm -hmm. And what's required? What's required is a broad selection of form factors depending on the type of server used. So at the edge, you might have a different form factor than used in the core data center. Uh, also flash technology. So we're on our fourth generation of uh, quad level cell flash technology. Very well proven, highly reliable, and we're translating that into the, the highest capacity SSDs on the planet. It's right there, um, by the way. Oh, so yeah. Here's, Show and tell, everybody. Here's one of our 61 terabyte drives today. Yeah. <laughs> so, that is. You know, those things, I, I got to tell you, are hot commodities these days with the, all the AI build outs, both in core data center, but also at the edge. <laughs> I have to ask I mean, some people might be watching and they're like, okay, what's the, what's the catch? Here, what, what what am I missing, right? Why, now that I've got you know QLC and the ability to uh, have have a ton of error correction, uh, performance is good, reliability, right? Like, what's the catch here? Like, what what do what objections would you possibly get from this, or are you getting from this, and how are you overcoming them? Oh, well, that's a good question. You know, I mean, first is everyone knows that from a a CapEx perspective on a per gigabyte basis or per terabyte basis, uh, flash drives are more expensive than a hard drive yeah. off the shelf. And But what we're seeing with building out this new technology type of data centers is that CapEx is quickly overshadowed by the other costs, whether it's power constraints, whether it's space constraints, and in many cases it's the con constraint of leaving a GPU unutilized. And uh, you know all the big data centers today, uh, from a core data center's perspective, yeah. of already to, to moving to, to high capacity flash. But, and we're seeing that trend at the edge right. as well, where the space is even more at a premium. The transition has been uh, magnificent. And when you're literally, you have companies that have to outlay billions of dollars in, in CapEx, if they can possibly um, shorten that even by a couple months. Yep. That's a tremendous amount of capital and working capital that, 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 that could be used. So Yeah, look at a calculus. Yeah. And you know, those that are doing the very, very simple math to Greg's point are yeah. gonna often land at H H D, you know. But uh, if you're doing the, the full calculus workup, yeah. I think you're gonna very quickly see that rotate. Yeah, and I know it's a little bit companies. different on the edge, you know, but but it's like that's where the reliability comes in and the speed, if you're trying to run the models yeah. out there on a hard drive, that just seems like something you have that's like a, really, you know, really hard. A, a two foot tall rack, and that's all you can get in there, you know, on the edge. I mean, there's lots of, it. Yeah, yeah, anyways, yeah. we could have yeah. that debate, but the, the, the TCO debate, I think well, will be very interesting. And I think when you yeah. do like that long term CapEx and return on, on capital, uh, you know, you do that math, I think you're going to increasingly see what you've built becoming more and more uh, of, a, of a winner in that formula. But again, it takes time. It does. Yeah. It takes time, but it's a little bit miraculous how quickly all of a sudden this, the, the sheer compute intensity of AI, right. the cost of all the other components yep. in AI, all of a sudden switching to, to solid state is, it's almost a no-brainer. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and <laughs> by the way, I'm, uh, on the power front, my, just kind of my final volley here is, is if I move from hard drive to your SSDs, I could have more power available to a GPU. That's right. Exactly. Right? And, and and that's that's a, a conversation I I like to call that power sloshing. I don't know if everybody likes it, but essentially I'm moving this power budget over to here. And and by putting uh, SSDs on the edge, you're giving them that opportunity. That's right. And, and maximizing your investments in, in GPUs. That's and good. that, my friend, was the whole calculus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Greg, Dave, I want to thank you so much for joining us here at this year's 6.5 Summit. Our pleasure. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks guys. Appreciate it. All right, everybody, stay with us. We are here in the Intelligent Edge 
at the Summit 2024. It's the 6-5 Summit. I don't know why it looked like I might have forgotten that. I didn't. <laughs> uh, stay with us for all of our sessions. Another great year, another great event. We appreciate you. We'll see you back soon.